side the series finale between the Nats and Cubs. Max Scherzer goes for a fifth straight win in a dynamite pitching matchup with John Lester. Game three under the lights at Wrigley Field. Beautiful night on the north side of Chicago. Now we're not happy the Nats lost last night, but it adds a little more tension for our fans and for us to have a rubber game with the kind of pitching matchup we have tonight. Max Scherzer and John Lester, two of the very best in the business. The Nats have seen Lester a couple of times, and the Cubs have seen Scherzer twice in this ballpark. Bob and FP, uh, the marquee can't be quite big enough for this one, it seems, tonight. Yeah, we get excited every fifth day when Max Scherzer pitches, but going against John Lester has been fantastic. Four of his last five starts going seven innings. These two, the marquee matchup in all of baseball tonight. Yeah, since 2008, what they've done, the starts, the innings, the ERAs, you name it. Max has 96 career wins. Lester has 120, and Scherzer's been amazing lately. Yeah, he's been amazing, and he has that extra gear that we always talk about, but the strikeouts to walk this year, 72 strikeouts against nine walks on the season. His last five starts, 43 strikeouts to just five walks, and he gets better when he has runners in scoring position. One for 17 are hitters against Max Scherzer with runners in scoring position. So we talk about how he turns it up and notch. John Lester the same. Very excited for a good pitching matchup, and the wind is not blowing out tonight. It's blowing straight down. We're getting a little breeze in the box tonight. By the way, the road ERA for Scherzer 1.00. It takes a special guy to be a road warrior like that. Well, I think when you have good stuff, it plays whether you're at home, whether you're on the road, and, and Max Scherzer has shown that. So, a big test for him tonight. This Cubs lineup can swing the bat, so this might be the best lineup he's faced this year. And the veteran who gets out the kids might be the one who wins tonight. In this series, Harper and Bryant both doing damage. Bryce, a couple of hits a homer and a walk. Bryant, three hits and two home runs. They've also both played outstanding defense. So two well-rounded young potential superstars on display tonight. Maryland book now at OCOcean.com and by your local BMW centers.
from the loop to the north side. Max Scherzer will pitch here for the third time in his career. All times he's met the Cubs, it's been at Wrigley Field with a 2-2-5 ERA, but no decisions yet. It is a perfect baseball evening. Wind uh, coming in a little bit tonight, making things a little cooler where we are. A little muggy, but it's 71, and the hitters will have to hit one through the breeze tonight to leave the premises. That's offense. When they get 10 hits, forget about it. Max Scherzer on the road, five consecutive starts with at least six innings pitch, at least six strikeouts, and fewer than two runs. That adds up to a one ERA on the road. And the Cubs now have homered in a season high six straight with Chris Bryant leading the way. The Nats have Span Desmond Escobar, Harper Zimmerman Ramos, Dan Ugla in there tonight. He has a career homer against Lester. And then Tyler Moore and Bryce hitting two home runs every three games on the average for the last three weeks. I see the arsenal for John Lester. Fastball last start 58% of the time, 91 miles an hour. He throws a cutter at 88, curveball at 74, changeup at 84. Get this, left-handers are hitting 319 against Lester this year. I'm going to tell you why as we get going in the show. He's averaging 8.25 strikeouts per nine. Max Scherzer averaging 10.02 strikeouts per nine. So you can see a lot of Ks tonight, folks. Both of these guys can bring it, and Lester will pound you in if you're right-handed. Set the defense for the Cubs behind John Lester tonight. Coglin Fowler, Lake. Cubs outfield. Castro Bryant, left side. Russell Rizzo, right side. And David Ross behind the plate. Denard Spin, the power guy for the Nets. In this series, another streak of consecutive home run games. Hashtag spanning has a whole different meaning in 2015. It used to be him spanning the outfield. But he's been spanning the bases four at a time this year. He's got five home runs in the first two months of the season. His career high is eight. So Denard Span has been slugging, folks, and we like it. A home run into the back of the net. I liked it. Celebrate the season with the American Standard All-Star Stales event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. So 370. His last 13 games, look at the extra base hits and the RBIs. Lefty-lefty matchup, and Denard has faced Lester 19 times with six hits and three RBIs. Lester's also walked in five times. And we're underway at 8.07 D.C. time with a strike low in the zone, and that's what Lester does. He pounds the bottom of the strike zone. Pitchers might get away with a few high ones tonight, though. Out of play, left side, 0-2. Hunter Wendelstedt, the crew chief, has the plate. Bob Davidson, Ryan Blackney, Mike Demuro, first, second, and third. 47th game of the year for the Nets. Mets won today, so the Nationals' lead is a game in the East. On a breaking ball down and away. Denard couldn't reach it. So the Mets taking care of their business. Braves one game under. Phillies trying to fight their way through a four game losing streak now as they lost to the Mets today. And the Marlins lost again. They now have 30 losses. So Matt Williams will send up Ian Desmond and then Escobar here trying to. Get one or two guys on base to get Bryce Harper in their first inning. Well, you want to get guys on base against John Lester because he can't throw to first. He's thrown over twice this year. One went down the right field line. One was a grenade that landed on a hop to Anthony Rizzo. He's got the funk. He's got the thing. He can't throw over to first. Pretty quick delivery to home plate when he does get a runner out there. But as a base runner, as soon as you see his foot pick up, you just go. So base runners at first key tonight. Desmond in the series, two for eight, 11 game hitting streak. That's outside. Last time Lester faced Ian, Desmond had a two for three night with a couple of doubles. That was on June 10th, 2012 at Fenway when the Nats were in the middle of that notorious series. He gave up three runs. The Nats beat the Sox 4 3 and swept that series. Desmond checks one down the line. 
getting away from the left fielder Coughlin. Looks like another double for Ian Desmond, his 15th of the year, and hello, 12 game hitting streak. 15th double of the season. There goes the no hitter, Ian Desmond, style here at Wrigley Field in game three. The rubber match gets inside it nice. That ball. Probably would have been out last night. He didn't hit it that high. But a bolt nonetheless and a one out double here for the Nats. So the 15th double. And now 15 for 45. During the 12 game streak and even 333. Here's Escobar. And I for one would like to see some holding by some base runners. When Bryce Harper is either in the batter's box or on deck which is the case here. Escobar going up aggressively in the series on base three times with a hit a walk and hit by a pitch. Well I know what you're saying Carp, but with Lester he can't throw to a base. Well, I'm not talking about first base. You know. No he can't throw to second. I mean if you're Ian Desmond here even though you look where Addison Russell is trying to hold him on he can't throw to a base period. First second third or home. Escobar not happy. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I think that was five or six wows. I think he just saw where David Ross reached across and it didn't hit the target. Nine career hits against Lester. Target is under his hands here. Or maybe up and in. Yeah, there it is down low. And the counts one and two. Way out ahead of a breaking ball, and I'm with you. I, you know, I like when the Nats are aggressive, but I think sometimes where your best hitter is dictates your approach. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. 99 days out of 100, unless a guy on the mound can't throw to a base. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. You got a guy like Bryce Harper coming up. You don't want to make outs on the bases. You let him hit. But if a guy's going to give you a free 90 feet, you take it every single time. Totally understand where you're coming from. One, two. And Escobar rung up on a pitch away and a very unhappy at bat for him. Two down. Well, I can't imagine Hunter Windelstadt loved the five wows. And maybe that's why he called that pitch about five inches off the plate away for strike three. Yeah. He thought about it for a while and punched him out. And here comes Harper facing Lester for the first time. Can't just walk him with Ryan Zimmerman on deck. This should be interesting. <laughs> well, the wind was blowing out, and Bryce Harper. Hit a high fly ball to the left, threw his bat down, just missed it. Hendricks looking at it, and Bryce looking at it some more. He watched <laughs> Coglin go to the fence, and he had his 17th home run of the year. <laughs> and he said last night that makes up for the one that Mookie Betts stole in Boston. Blowing away, 1 1. Harper didn't face Lester in that series. I'm trying to recall, he wasn't banged up. I don't think because the Nats and Harper did damage in that series in Boston, but sure like to know who was in his lineup spot that night. One ball, one strike. And a little tapper that rolls over foul to the right side. Bryant and Harper. Harper and Bryant. They've both done good damage in this series. Both of Chris Bryant's home runs have been on sliders right down the middle. Bryce Harper's home run was on a fastball that blew out of here. We just showed you. Bryce is seeing 4.35 pitches per plate appearance this year, second most in the big leagues. Cleveland's Carlos Santana, the only man seeing more. 
So there you have it. Four pitches. Bryant is third in the National League, seeing 4.28 pitches. So the two guys we just showed you are second and third in the league, seeing pitches per at bat. Yeah, young guys making the game come to them. Or maybe some pitchers a little bit careful with both of them. Yeah. Two two with Zimmerman on deck. Did he go? That's a swing, says Mike DeMuro down at third. And Bryce doesn't say anything. Home plate umpire at least asking for help. That was borderline. Could have gone either way. The fire, the power, the efficiency, the emotion, the game face of Max Scherzer. Coughlin, Rizzo, Bryant. And then the guy down at the bottom had three hits last night, Addison Russell. They bat him ninth after the pitcher. He got a big time job done last night. He's three for seven with an RBI in the series. And hacking on the first one is Chris Coughlin. Who has two hits and a walk against the Nats here? Through the fastball, 49% of the time his last start. That's the lowest percentage all year. That was against the Phillies. He threw the changeup 24% of the time last time out. That was the highest percentage he's thrown the changeup all year. What was the name of that song? It just came back to Are back. you something? I can't. Are, yeah. are you winning? Maybe? Well, right now, neither team is. It's a split in the series and a big rubber game tonight. And that's over below. Max taking a little bit off at 8 and 5. Coglin 0 for 2 with a walk career against him. One of four Cubs in the lineup facing Scherzer before. And that's low. And if you're wondering why the change of percent was so high, it, you know, very start to start based on the pitcher's feel for a pitch, based on who they're facing. Maybe a ball club, not a good change up hitting team. You see a couple of guys swinging this. You go to it. He had a great feel for it against the Phils last time. Three and two on a challenge fastball. Ninety five right in there. One point oh oh on the road. Well, it, don't, the home's not too shabby either. All right, we'll talk about that <laughs> when we go home. <laughs> Zach Grinky has a zero ERA on the road for the Dodgers. The only guy with a lower number. 3 2 pitch. Right in there. Foul tipped on 96 for the first K, and that's 73 strikeouts in 65 innings. Against just nine walks, and Max Scherzer looking at a leadoff walk possibly. 
to Coughlin. And look at this big swing by Coughlin. Head flying out of there. And Max Scherzer reached back for 96 right there. Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant, the next two, facing Scherzer for the first time. Just so much deception in his delivery, the crossfire action, right handers and left handers. I mean, everybody having trouble picking up anything that Max throws. At the knees. Hitters always give a funny look when the catcher drops a strike. Well, that looked pretty well located. Rizzo in this series, two for seven with a walk. That's an easy looking 94 right there. We told you there'd be a lot of K's tonight. Three K's for Lester in the top of the first, and Scherzer starts the bottom with the K himself. Inside the numbers with Jeep. Strikeout to walk ratio. Guys who hardly walk anybody, and Scherzer 8 to 1. Got him on the breaking ball down and away. Put your gloves away, boys. You're not going to need them tonight. Both sides. Just stand out there and watch Max Scherzer go. Everything away to Rizzo. And you've seen him the first two games of the series. This is what happens when you get to game three of a set when you haven't played a team this year. The Nats have tried Rizzo down and in. He's shown them that he can drop the barrel on that ball, pull it, and keep it fair. To right field. So what does Scherzer do? He pays attention for two days and he goes away to Rizzo. That was nice. Now let's see if he uses his big time heater against Bryant, who, as you said, has hit a couple of hittable breaking balls out of the park. Target in, that means fastball usually. Tried to bolt that inside corner at the knees and missed. Chris Bryant, no homers, his first 91 plate appearances in the major leagues. He's now hit seven in his last 73 appearances. Two and one. Moving around. Fastball in. Fastball away. Mid 90s. That's a great looking slider, and he didn't get the call. Hmm. That thing looked like it got a lot of the plate. Three and one. Threw him another one. Two out walk. 25th walk by Bryant. Tyler Moore getting a start left field tonight against John Lester. Dan Ugla getting a start at second base. You mentioned his home run off Lester. And by the way, Ugla's my pick to click tonight. Just for whatever that's worth. And I'm uh, I'm having a hard time forgetting that swing of Ian Desmond. All right. Who now is three for four with two doubles career against Lester. I'm up one to nothing in this game by the way. I think we played it in New York one day. And I took who you took. Today. <laughs> On the edge. Dexter Fowler. He has faced Scherzer the most of any cup 13 times. With four hits and three RBIs. Not that I'm keeping track or anything. Yeah. You? Because I'm not very competitive. Lifted to left. Camping is Tyler Moore. Couple of steps in. Good first innings for both pitchers. A preview of things to come on a perfect baseball night in Chicago.
So if you liked the tricouts, you tuned into the right game. I told you already, 8.25 per nine for Lester. So he starts out with three strikeouts in the top of the first, and then Max Scherzer doing his thing in the bottom half. Coglin, thanks for coming. Anthony Rizzo, nasty pitch. So five strikeouts so far in this one. Zimmerman Ramos Ugla. Of course, Span and Harper, the only lefties in the lineup tonight. Ryan Zimmerman still looking for his first hit of this series. 0 for 7 with a walk. He's 1 for 8 with a double and an RBI against John Lester career. When you're facing a guy with a good cutter, if you're a right handed hitter, it's a dangerous thing to look for it in. It's really a hard pitch to hit, it, it, it kind of gets you thinking wrong. You know, facing a guy like Al Leiter back in the day. He could throw that cutter in and you foul two balls off the tarp down the left field line and they throw a fastball away and it would look like a pitch out because he gets you looking in. You still as a right handed hitter facing John Lester tonight have to look for the ball elevated out over the plate and think about going back up the middle. If you think pull off him you're falling right into his trap. One and two to Zimmerman. Off speed. And Bob Henley picks it off. Saw him chatting with Max Scherzer after the first inning. I wonder if Max is planning on visiting Bob at third base again today. Oh, yeah. Big hit. Great running of the bases. His last time out to help win a ball game. Two balls, two strikes. And Ryan works at full. He's walked 16 times this year. He's driven in 20 runs his last 27 games. And Mercedes Benz tracking the entire at bat. Strike three. Caught looking. No contact outs for the Nats yet. That was a backdoor cutter from John Lester and a beautiful one. He started off the plate away and watched the late movement. Zimmerman gives up. It's off the plate when you make your decision to swing and look at it just run back at the end. Nice sequence right there. He threw the cutter in off the plate, then backdoored the cutter away for strike three. Wilson Ramos. It's jammed on the first one. That's not going to be in the air long, and David Watts is there. And suddenly, Wilson Ramos is one for his last 20 with a big homer here Monday. Celebrate U.S. Army Day delivered by UPS at Nats Park. That's June 1st. Nats welcome the Toronto Blue Jays in town, 705 start. The U.S. Army drill team will perform on the field, and there will be a live performance from the Blues Swamp Rob. Who hasn't heard of them? The Miller Lite scoreboard walk before the game. Go to nationals.com to purchase your tickets right now. Blue Swamp Romp. I know that is so in your iPod. If not, it's about to be. That's right. Trying to stay up to date here. I'm up to 1978. <laughs> <laughs> Just the hair behind your ties. <laughs> Here's Zugla and a couple of hops for Chris Bryant. So just a couple of pitches and two outs for Lester after four K's in a row.
walked in eight of his nine outings this year. So how has Scherzer been able to keep his pitch count low enough to go deep into games while still racking up as many strikeouts as he has? Scherzer said that the keys for him have been throwing off-speed stuff in any count, especially early in the count, and that he's been able to keep his walk totals down. Scherzer's averaging just 1.3 walks per nine innings this year, exactly half of his total from last year. He's keeping hitters off balance, he's avoiding the free passes, and he's consistently working deep into games. All right, Dan, thanks. That's our Coons.com sideline report. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. The hitter, Starlin Castro. By the way, Dan, nice report on the Ivy yesterday. Folks don't know that was a two take report. We lost him in the Ivy the first time he went out there. And then we found him and he got business taken care of. Party with Andre Dawson out there? Yeah, that was interesting though. But when I saw some of the close ups that they did yesterday, it's surprising how deep the Ivy is at places with the vines behind him before you get to the brick. That does not help pad the outfielders though. Challenge fastball hit the center and it'll drop in front of Denard Spann. Starlin Castro's second hit of this series. Tonight's the first night he's not batting cleanup. Kind of building on what Dan just said, you can attack and be aggressive as a pitcher without your fastball. You know, being aggressive doesn't mean you throw all fastballs all night. It means just throwing all your pitches for strikes, and that's what Max Scherzer does, and we've talked about it pretty much every one of his starts, that him being in the American League for so many years, I just thought he was a power guy. But when you get to watch him pitch every fifth day, he's a pitcher. Any pitch, any count, four strike. There's 25 year old Junior Lake spelling Jorge Soler in right field tonight. And he hits one a mile high to center. Last night, that's over the batter's eye. Tonight, it's about 20 feet in front of the wall. One out. Last night, that's in Milwaukee. The tale of two ballparks last night and tonight, Wrigley Field. Yeah, last night the flag's blowing up and out straight away center field. What and when we got here this afternoon, it was hard from the left field corner to the right field corner. Then it died, and now it's kicked up a little bit. So here's Scherzer against David Ross, who's three for nine career against him with three, actually two doubles and three strikeouts. Goes up hacking. They're all hacking. Not waiting around. See the Cubs game plan early. And we saw Ramos and Ugla first pitch swinging. At the top of this inning. Got strikeout guys pitching as a hitter. You don't want to get to two strikes. 38 year old backup catcher David Ross. That's a front door strike with 87. 02 and Nissan will track it. There's that long hold against base runners and then the catcher in the batter's box Ross getting time from Hunter Wendelstead. We always talk about how it disrupts a base runner's timing when Max Scherzer holds the ball long. If you're a hitter you're wondering when's he coming at me. I mean he'll hold it eight seconds sometimes. When's he going to throw. When do I get ready. Should I get ready now. Is he going to throw it. I mean these are the thoughts going through your head up there. We mentioned this last night. It's that odd time of the evening here where the sun shines between the lower and upper deck on the third base side. And Bob Davidson's shading his eyes in case he has to make a call over there. In case he has to call a block. <laughs> in the air to right. Ugla over and out. Harper is there as well if needed. And Dan Ugla takes care of the fair ball. Two outs. Earn run average leaders. Max sitting at fourth right now. Shelby Miller's been throwing well lately. Michael Waka undefeated. Zach Greinke. He told you his road ERA is zero. And then there's A.J. Burnett. Number eight batter is the pitcher. John Lester. And a pretty good take.
Are you going to say it or am I going to say it? I'm, I'm waiting until the end of the event. <laughs> okay. I'm waiting. He could. I don't want to be the first play-by-play -play guy tossed out of the booth by his analyst. He has a chance to set a record right now. We'll just kind of leave it at that. Well, he's already set a record. <laughs> yeah, he has a chance to break it. Excuse me. <laughs> he has a chance of breaking a record he's already set. Yes. How about that? One ball, one strike. He puts a charge into that. Span back. He's got it. And now John Lester is 0 for 58 in his career. It's the most of any hitless batter in Major League history. <laughs> oh, I was holding my breath right here so hard because that would have been both of our faults. He's getting a standing ovation. That the ladies are having a nice time on this beautiful baseball night. Last night, Jordan Zimmerman gave up a leadoff home run to Dexter Fowler, and that was it. And a night win, the wind was gusting out to Wrigley Field. Thought the most impressive part about last night's game is both starting pitchers gave up just one run. Jordan Zimmerman got a feel for his slider in the middle of the game. He went to his curveball late in the game. So seven innings pitch, six hits, one run, five strikeouts, three walks. And we just caught our breath from John Lester's long fly ball. Glad we didn't talk about that and something happened because Chelsea Desmond would chase us from one coast to another. Yeah, we were the most superstitious baseball wife I've ever been around. Yeah, we were. And uh, whew, that was close. Although Len Casper, the Cubs TV guy, comes over between innings and tells us that John Lester swings the bat as well or better than a lot of pitchers. He just hasn't had any base hits fall in. But 0 for 58, still yeah, 0 for 58. Come on with that. I mean, 0 for 58. I mean, drive a different way to the ballpark or something yeah. if you have that bad luck. <laughs> I don't know. Shot to the left side. Tyler Moore. I mean, was it taken care of by Chris Bryant? A hard 0 for 58. Yeah. I mean, there, there's some politicians here in Chicago that should hire Lynn for their <laughs> campaigns right now. <laughs> I mean, basically. if he can spin 0 for 58. Based on that last swing, I don't doubt it. But, I mean, come on. 0 for 58. Max Scherzer. Last time he pitched, the 2 1 win at home over the Phillies. He got the base hit in the sixth. Did some serious one out base running on an Ian Desmond double off the right center field wall to score the run that made the difference. He's 4 for 22. And you might remember that on opening day, I picked him as the hitting champ of the pitching staff. You did. Fister's right behind him, although Doug disabled right now, and he has three hits. Zimmerman, two. The other starter, Tanner Roark. And I believe yeah, that still counts. But uh, Tanner's, yeah, he did have a base hit here the other day. That was as a starter. 
And right now John Lester's mowing down the Nats first time through. They go one for nine with Desmond's double and five strikeouts. Eric Davis. His dad was a Reds fan and named him in honor of the outstanding Cincinnati outfielder. Tearing it up for Syracuse. These are some serious pitching numbers right there. We've seen Eric a time or two up in the Nats bullpen over the last two years. Matt Denard Span has seen four pitches and four strikes from John Lester. There is nothing to wait around for on either squad tonight if you're hitting. Get the first hittable fastball out over the plate. And either be standing on first or back in the dugout, but you don't want to get to two strikes with both of these guys. Target away. Strike five to spin. Lester career 120 and 69. It's his 262nd start. He's 2 and 0 oh in three starts against the Nats with a 332 ERA. And there's Ian Desmond who already has a double tonight. That's into right field. Span gets an 0-2 curveball. Manages to turn it around and it sees its way into the outfield for the second Washington hit. A nice job of staying through that, find the hole. I'll tell you what, back in the old days there at Wrigley Field, you couldn't get one through the infield if you had to. The grass used to be long, the infield was crowned, and if you're sitting in the first base dugout, you couldn't even see the bag at third base, but now it's leveled off, the grass is shorter, and ground balls get through. And let's see if the NARC goes here on what we were talking about early. Yeah, good time to keep an eye on that. He's three for three. I was told that base runners against Lester, since they know he's not going to throw over, get really big leads and they almost feel uncomfortable how far out they are because they're not used to being that far and they have trouble stealing. Slow, slow breaking ball and Desmond pops it up to Addison Russell. The Nationals strand their second base runner. The pitching marquee as advertised so far. The ball to home it looks like they're coming to first and as a base stealer you're conditioned your whole life if it looks like he's coming over let's watch Denard Span together right here so he's got a nice lead off John Lester and watch him kind of jab step back toward first base you see the little lean back to first so even though as a base stealer you know that Lester's thrown over to first base twice all season and it's been disastrous you're conditioned to look at him and if it looks like he's coming to first you jab back and we were told that's what happens with a lot of base runners against him. 
Max Scherzer running that fastball up and in on Addison Russell right there. Russell hitting 252, 21 years old. He has dazzled us with his defense in this series. And that's a fastball that just misses away. And what do you do as a base dealer in those situations when you have a lefty whose best move is to home? You've got to force yourself to go right in his face. It goes against everything you've done your whole life. If it looks like he's coming over, you just got to stick your nose in there and go first move. Two and one. This is where hitting the pitcher eighth helps you because your number nine hitter is leading off the inning and Addison Russell has the most hits of any number nine hitter in baseball. Twenty uh, the second most twenty eight. Jose Iglesias of the Tigers. There you have the DH of course has twenty nine hits. Little flare. Into center field and the Cubs have their second hit and the second consecutive time they've had their leadoff man on. If you would have said that Addison Russell has more hits than any nine hole hitter in the National League I would have said okay. I mean come on Carp it's usually a yeah, he's the hits. only guy. <laughs> But that's in baseball. Yeah. Nice that bat by the young second baseman. Does a nice job of keeping his hands inside the baseball. Did it last night. He's been impressive with the glove. And don't forget, he's 21 years old in 124 days. Usually, guys like that are playing an A ball somewhere. <laughs> Some fans booing the little. Calling card toss over to first. Chris Coughlin struck out swinging. He was ahead in the count three and one first time up. Nice breaking ball right in there. After a long hold, he drops another one in there. And the reaction of the hitter not liking the pitch might also tell you that waiting was a problem as well, like you said earlier. Yeah, first pitch slider, second pitch changeup. Coglin thought it was up and away. Russell, by the way, running one for three this year. Sleep with that throw, but he's got a way better move than that. We've seen it. That's his Z move. Usually pitchers have an A, B, and C move. That's his Z move. Bigger lead by Russell. There's the good one. To the count, so Max has all the control here. Another long hold and a fastball outside. So the leadoff man aboard here in the third. Welcome to Wrigley Field. Those of you who saw the Orioles beat Houston five to four, welcome to Wrigley Field in Chicago. Scoreless game, bottom of the third. And for our American League fans who might have just joined us. They know all about John Lester. He's locked up in a pretty good duel with Max Scherzer. Bottom of the third inning here. Leadoff man Addison Russell aboard. The number nine hitter with the base hit. Now Chris Coughlin. Ready for a 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. 95 up in the zone. And that's Max Scherzer's third strikeout. 
Well, you saw the change up for strike two up in the zone, and maybe Caldwell thinking, I got to cover the top of the zone, and Scherzer does a nice job of nailing the top of the zone. This one a fastball at 95. It brings in Anthony Rizzo, who he struck out with a backdoor breaking ball low and away his first time. Lester has five strikeouts in three innings. And now Max faces the two outstanding young hitters that Cubs feature Rizzo and Bryant. And when you're facing a guy like Max Scherzer, you're not 100% sure you're getting a fastball. On top of that, when you do go all in on a fastball, the deception is delivery. The fact that he cross fires and steps toward the third baseline, throws across his body, you know, add all that up with 95, 96. That's why you see guys fouling balls off constantly with the Scherzer fastball. A swing, says Mike DeMuro. And Rizzo's going for a long walk. Well, Bryce Harper got called out on a check swing his first time up. Very similar to Anthony Rizzo right there. And you liked what Bryce Harper did. He just put his helmet down, his bat down, and walked out to right field. Didn't argue a bit. Target away on 0-2. There's the quick move. Ooh, Zimmerman short hopped Max Scherzer, but Max blocks it on the return throw. Douglas Desmond poised for a grounder up the middle. Rizzo's only hit into two double plays. He'll line one to right. He did a great job of just going down and easing a changeup into right field. First and second, one out with Brian coming up. I mean, if you're a 300 hitter at the major league level, your bat stays in the strike zone a long time. What do I mean by that? Well, some guy's bat is in and out. Watch how long Rizzo keeps the barrel of the bat through the strike zone. Even though he was fooled on the Scherzer changeup, he kept his hands back. And when he finally swung, stayed through it nice. You see Bryce Harper do that a lot on changeups as well. Here's Chris Bryant. Walked his first time. Three hits, two homers. He's been on base five times in this series. Fastball up to center, but Span is there. Didn't get all of it. The lead runner goes to third, and Denard throws into second to keep Rizzo at first, two down. Point of the fans are conditioned on a Chris Bryant fly ball here at Wrigley Field to go nuts. And the ball he hit last night, 477 feet off the scoreboard left center field. They hit a little past halfway up, but you see Scherzer beating him with the fastball in. Just got it in off the sweet spot, kept it in the ballpark, and actually the Narcs fan to come in on that. And I saw Bryant's little expression right there. He knew he didn't get it. I see a little length in his swing. Meaning... It's kind of got a loop in it, and that's why you saw the sliders go so far the first two games of the series. And I'm wondering if he can hit a mid to upper 90s fastball on the inner half of the plate. I'm sure he can, but I haven't seen it yet. Here's Fowler. Fly ball to Tyler Moore first time. That's a good block by Ramos to his right. Gloved it cleanly. With Addison Russell 90 feet away. Or less in that case with his lead. And the counts are 1-1.
Perfect heater, 95 outer half. Runners in scoring position. Here comes the extra gear we always talk about. Fowler, four for 14 career against Max. Good block by Ramos. It had five hole written all over it. Yeah, not afraid to throw any pitch in the arsenal with Wilson back there. Speaking of that, the Blackhawks playing a game six tonight. If you just hear the crowd erupt and there's nothing going on in the baseball game, <laughs> the Blackhawks scored. Right down the street. And the hitter asking for time again. Cubs have had at least a base runner in every inning, in this case, two. And the 2 2, 97. Blown by Dexter Fowler. Max Scherzer strikes him out career for the sixth time. Here's that extra gear. I got this. Don't worry. As we go to the top of the fourth dollar, Dogs presented by Hatfield returns on Monday, June 1st as the Nats take on the Blue Jays. That's a 7.05 start. It'll be available for purchase at all Nats dog stands until the start of the sixth inning while supplies last. Get your game tickets now at nationals.com. Good grip on that, Geo, with the left hand. Mm -hmm. Top of the fourth, Escobar, Harper, Zimmerman. And a big roundhouse curveball arcing its way right in there. He's such a diver. He dives for the fastball away all the time, and he's diving out there again. If you remember his first time up, he struck out on a backdoor cutter away. That one came in. Target in. Ball game started at 8.07 Eastern. Here we are at the top of the hour in Chicago. Kind of working our way toward twilight time at beautiful renovated Wrigley Field. New bleachers, new scoreboards, and a leadoff man on for the first time tonight. Escobar's second hit in eight at bats in this series. So Lefster off the stretch to Bryce Harper. I don't know how aggressive you know Escobar will be tonight after last night. We'll see. 
misadventures on the base paths last night at first and between second and third. Harper on a check swing called out first time. <laughs> and he got Chris Bryant on the move. Got double gloves for Bryce. I think that's the first time I've seen that in a while. And he hit on the field today, which is the first time I've seen him do that since his three home run game. Been hitting in the tunnel, in the cage. Yeah, there was no BP yesterday. Out here at least. Talked to him about the gloves, and he said it's just a field thing. Usually he goes right handed glove only. Against right-handed starters, he told me against left-handed relievers, he likes to feel the bat and think about going the other way, so he goes no gloves. Squares again, takes another ball, two and one. And tonight he's got double gloves, and just the fact that he squared twice means he is not picking up John Lester. Another pitch just off the corner to the man with a 467 on base percentage who has walked 40 times. It's pretty good average in a 3 1 count. Not bad. High ops. On base percentage plus slugging since the 9th of May, 18 days ago, a ridiculous 1.488. Pirates have come alive with their two guys. And of course, Chris Bryant on that list as well. Ryan Braun doing some slugging. Harper, how close was that? Two on, nobody out. Why did it take? You know what's weird? He's taken so many close pitches all year, and you're thinking that's a strike all the way. I guarantee you on pitch track, that's going to be a ball. And Joe Madden can't see side to side. You see height when you're off to the side on the bench. But let's check out the whole pitch sequence. Bryce Harper squared around on a first pitch cutter at 89. Then he gets a fastball that's cutting at 92. Squares around again just off the plate. That one's way out there. Pitch number five fouled off. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Just off the plate, and that's been the story of Bryce Harper all year. If it's two inches off, he doesn't swing. I'd like to know what the numbers are on his vision. Zimmerman, big RBI spot. With two on, nobody out in a nothing nothing game as the middle innings get going here. Ballpark playing neutral tonight. Flags fairly still. And there's that low, slow curveball, 2 0. So with runners in scoring position, Ryan, 26 of his 32 RBIs. He's hit five home runs. As mentioned earlier, 20 runs batted in his last 27 games coming in. David Ross and John Lester. Caught up with Joe Madden before the game, talked to him for about 20 minutes. He is digging Chicago and everything about it. Loves his ball club, loves the energy, loves the vibe. I think uh, it, this is a match made for each other, don't you think? Absolutely. Zimmerman and that's the double play ball. Harper goes after the second baseman. The Nats benefit from a bad throw and Escobar will score. Addison Russell coming up short and give Bryce Harper some credit right there. So Addison Russell felt this. Watch him back off the bag. He knows that Bryce Harper is not being held on by Anthony Rizzo. 
So as a second baseman in those situations, it's the one you hate because the trail runner has got a bigger lead, so you know he's going to get on you quick. And when the trail runner is Bryce Harper and you know he's going to play hard, Addison Russell, a guy who hasn't played a lot of second base, only five games there in the minor leagues, backed away from Bryce Harper. The funny thing about that is I watch Anthony Rizzo taking fungos from second base to first, about 30 of them before the game today, picking balls just like that, and he whiffed on that one. He worked on that very play before the game for about 20 minutes. Wilson Ramos in a big spot, fouled out on one pitch his first time. That's down and in, couldn't get to it, 0-2. So, fielder's choice, 6-4. Escobar scores on E-4. Russell, seventh error. And the Cubs, 37th. Only Milwaukee has made more errors in the National League. And Wilson taking on 0-2. Hit her way off the plate and the target well outside. Low. You curve as a second baseman, you have a list in your head of guys that are on first that are going to come get you. You know, you know who it is. But when there's first and second and nobody's holding the runner on at first as a second baseman, now you're thinking anything slow hit, I got a guy with an extended lead that's going to get on me. And you'll see a lot of second basemen clear themselves in front of the bag on that play. And Addison Russell decided to play behind the bag. And that was a difference. Ramos got a pitch up a little late for it. Wilson able to ID that curveball. I'll show it to you one more time. So you see Bryce Harper on first. He's not being held on, and it's a chopper to short. So this is taking a long time. What you do on a slow hit ball as a second baseman, you come across and clear yourself toward the shortstop, and you kind of step toward the mound. Then you don't have to worry about the runner. Russell used the bag as his defense, but in doing that, took his momentum away from the throw. Runner going, and Ramos takes a walk. So the Nationals, two walks a hit. Benefiting from an error in the inning and two men aboard again with only one out. And now Dan Douglas stepping in. Lester had breezed through the first three innings on 36 pitches. He's thrown 20 more here in the fourth. Ugla first time up, went up first pitch hacking, bounced out to Bryant. And right now the breaking stuff by John Lester not finding the strike zone. To the outside edge. Well, you'd think that John Lester might be thinking to himself, I know who I'm going up against tonight, and I really can't afford to give up any more runs. And somewhere in the Nats dugout or in the tunnel down there, Max Scherzer's thinking, I got all I need right now. Ninety down and in. I mean, he's ready to hit too. Shocker. <laughs> Tyler Moore on deck and Scherzer in the hole. Cutter from Lester tonight is acting more like a slider. It's got a lot of sweep to it. When it's right, it's just very subtle at the end. But tonight, it's breaking a lot, and he's having trouble keeping it in the zone. And that one running away at 93. So as mentioned, 36 pitches through three. 
And now beyond 60 on the next one. There's that curveball again, missing. Three and two. Cubs defense, a lot of standing around here. Zimmerman at second, Ramos at first. A number seven hitter with pop. And Ugla is out on a pitch that gets the corner. Yeah, I was having an extended talk with Hunter Wimblestead. He didn't like that call. Hunter's been getting it from both clubs tonight. Did that come back? Good frame by David yeah. Ross. Got the call. Nissan on that one showing it outside. About two baseballs outside. Now it's up to Tyler Moore with two down. Guys uh, having some fairly easy takes on the curveball right now. And you have to take advantage right now if you're the Nationals. You got a really good pitcher who's been pitching well of late on the ropes. Falling behind, having trouble throwing strikes. Max Scherzer checking with Randy Knorr about something. Always looking for an edge. Something about a fastball if you read Randy Nor's lips. Ninety one on the heater, two and one. Same pitch to Dan Ugla. Maybe a little higher. Yeah, pitcher not around the plate very much in this inning, really benefiting from a generous zone. Two walks already. Got to be hacking if it's close. Target in. Now that's an interesting. Fewer than half strikes now. That's the tricky part with two strikes against a guy like Lester. Is he going to throw the backdoor cutter? Is he going to throw it down the middle, run it on my hands? I can't give up on the one away, but I have to be aware of the one in. That's why you see so many guys swinging early so you don't have to get in this situation. That's a good take by Tyler Moore. Three and two gives both runners a chance for a head start. Target in 3 2 pitch. Tyler Moore having a solid at bat here. Ross to the mound again. There's an old saying for hitters with two strikes look away, react in. And I think even in a 3 2 count, that's what you have to do against a guy like John Lester. Look for that backdoor cutter away, and if you see it starting in, just fire your hands. Try to pull them in as quick as you can and fight to get that barrel of the baseball. 
Matt Williams knows all about that. We were talking about taking BP in Wrigley Field today. He said he misses it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could come out early. Yeah, he could probably, he still probably get here at noon. He could still hit some taters. I bet he could. Going to do that 3 2, 2 on, 2 out thing again. Tyler Moore can't get to 92 up and away. Lester, 2Ks, Ugla, and Moore. And the Nats pick up their first run this series without a homer. In 12 game streak. John Lester doing his thing with seven strikeouts, and Max Scherzer has four of his own. We're going to show them to you right here. And right now, start this one up against Chris Coughlin for a swinging strikeout, then down and away to Anthony Rizzo for strikeout number two, and then Coughlin again with an elevated fastball off an elevated changeup that was called a strike, and then right down the middle to Dexter Fowler for strike three. Five, six, seven for the Cubs. Castro, Lake, and Ross. Bottom four. Twilight time arriving at Wrigley. Tough time to see a fly ball if you're an outfielder. There are no outfield lights in this ballpark. So if you're looking in, the ball can get a little dark on you. Is that a plaid outfield? I don't think I've seen a plaid outfield before. Oh, that's interesting what they did. Yeah. It's like one of my ties. I saw a guy with some Scotch guard out there before the game getting it ready. <laughs> Here's Castro on an 0 1, and he skies it, and I hope they can see it because I can't. Ryan Zimmerman can. He gave a great visual signal to Dan Ugly that he had it. Speaking of that guy who just caught that pop up, come out to Nats Park on Thursday, June 4th. Nats take on these very Cubbies. First 25,000 fans, you get a Ryan Zimmerman bobblehead that's presented by PNC Bank. Special bobblehead commemorates these walk off homer at Nats Park opening day 2008. Well, you should have 10 of them then, because he's had 10 walk off homers. That one was hit in the month of March. Or just a bobblehead with 10 heads on it. That's a perfect breaking ball at the knees to Junior Lake. Fly ball to center first time. And Ramos takes the brunt of that. Junior Lake had a good break in with the Cubs two years ago. He had three hits in his major league debut. July 19th of 2013 went on to hit 284 in 64 games with just 211 last year. Jorge Soler has shown up and taken the right field job for the most part. And that was an 0-2 pitch hit into the corner. Here comes Harper. He's going to gun it. And a little bit offline. Ian Dusman had just to go three or four feet 
off the bag to get it. A nice piece of hitting by Junior Lake. Going with the pitch down the right field corner. Second double the season for Lake. That's not a bad pitch by Max Scherzer. He threw it exactly where he wanted to. Sometimes hitters will beat a good pitch. And how about Bryce Harper playing this like it's his home ballpark? Plays the carom perfectly. One hop, or no hop bullet, excuse me, to Ian Desmond to make that one close. Closer than I thought it was going to be. Runner in scoring position, one out for David Ross. Number seven hitter and the pitcher on deck. Front door slider for a strike. Ross popped out to Ugla first time. Ross career three for ten against Max. Catcher shows bunt. Got to be an appeal, right? Yeah, he went. Bob Davidson says strike two. If I'm John Lester on deck in a one nothing game I want my catcher trying to drive in that run from second base. We've seen David Ross he's a very good base hit bunner. But. I'm sure Joe Madden would like to see him swing. Yeah that turned the count around to the pitcher's favor. And now Scherzer with a low slider strikes him out. Number five. For Max Scherzer. With the pitcher coming up. And Lester put a charge in one last time up. Tight little late slider right there at 86. Looks like a fastball the whole way. Watch how straight this ball is. He's thinking fastball, go to swing, subtle movement. Might even have been a cutter right there from Scherzer at 86. Lester this year 0 for 22. Charge into that. Put a charge into me. <laughs> Runner going. And the Nats will give Junior Lake third base. Yeah, pretty good jump in the background. Wilson Ramos says, you know what? We have the pitcher hitting. I'm not throwing this one to left field. Let's concentrate on the guy in the box. You can have third base. Lake two for two this year. Escobar even with a bag over there at third. Uh, how about the two contacts Lester's made tonight? He actually hit one the opposite way last time before the long fly ball to center. Well, so far, Lynn Casper's scouting report on John Lester has been dead on. He can swing it. Maybe he gets a 2 1 slider. Let's see. Or 97. Or 97. Two to the count. Fourth inning over. over High 59. 90. Yep. See ya. Over 59. Over 59. It's a hard over 59. I know exactly how he feels.
six innings. Span has five home runs in 29 games this season. Tied for the most homers Span has had in any season over the last six years. Hitting coach Rick Shue told me that he's always felt that Span has more power in him than he's actually shown on the field. And that the key this year is that Span is using his lower half more and he's handling more quadrants of the strike zone. That he's getting the pitches up and still dropping the bat head to balls down in the zone. Shu said he feels Span's swing is better now than it was last year, which is pretty impressive considering Span hit 302 last season and tied for the league lead in hits. As we mentioned earlier in this series, thanks, Dan. He had eight home runs in 09 for Minnesota and drove in 68 runs. Well, that coupled with all the core work he did on his rehab from the abdominal pulls or the sports hernia or whatever the official term is now, it seems like he's got more pop. Look at Max Scherzer up the middle, slightly off to the left, and that's his fifth base hit of the season in 24 at bats. I think it's more fired up when he gets a base hit than when he strikes somebody out. And you see that ball kind of knuckling back up the middle. He was probably saying, hey, John Lester, you're not the only one that's going to get some good hacks here tonight. I am too. Watch him. I mean, he gave some knucks to Tony Tarasco. <laughs> that he should have probably did with his left hand. <laughs> hitting 208 right now. So here's Denard pulled an 0-2 curveball into right field last time up. That one will get out of play over the Cubs dugout. That would have been a home run last time. So you see that thing on David Ross's left forearm? It's like a scouter report that he looks at from time to time. It's got how to work hitters. You know, like a quarterback with the plays on it. You see that right there? It's a sleeve. It's got the notes in there. And maybe he looks at it between innings because I haven't seen him peek at it in the middle of an inning when he's back there. Go over the hitters that are coming up. I've never seen that before with a major league catcher. Span up the middle, and Denard's going to have to hurry. Out on a close play. On a 4 6 3, Russell to Castro to Rizzo. Matt Williams got his hand in the air. I think they might take a look at this. Randy Nord to the phone. Matt on the top step. And I Here think they're going to challenge it. Was it whether Span beat it or Rizzo on the bag? And he has to tell Hunter Windlestad which one it is. Maybe at second off the bag too. Let's see right here. Oh, I think at second. How about that? And maybe first was I think Rizzo's foot was on the bag. Okay, so check that box. And the bad feed from Addison Russell took Starlin Castro off the bag, and that's even more valuable because now you got Max Scherzer in scoring position. And at Pete, this is the much discussed neighborhood play. That was in a different neighborhood, though. I think if the throw is perfect on the neighborhood play and there's some contact to be and you clear yourself, okay. But I think if the throw actually takes you off as it did right there and he's nowhere near the bag, that that's a different story. Yeah, Ryan Blackney, the rookie umpire at second. Umpires in a group conferring. It's a safety situation maybe they're thinking but the, but the throw took him okay if it's a perfect feed and I'm clearing myself because I got Bryce Harper bearing down on me I get it but when the throw takes you off that's that's a different story it's a bad feed and that's what that was and that has to be what Hunter Wendelstead just told Matt Williams Runner not that close, so I don't think safety is an issue. Scherzer's are sliding like halfway between first and second to get out of the way. Interesting. Mm. Bates is empty, two outs for Ian Desmond.
And I'm thinking the Blackhawks might have just scored a goal. Yeah, do you hear that? That's a fair ball down into the Cubs bullpen. Hits the bricks down to second. It's another double for Ian Desmond. Second of the night. And his 16th of the year. So he now has a double double night to extend that hitting streak. And your pick to click is clicking. Double first time up. Double third time up. And I don't think you say that play at second cost the Nats a run because you never know what Ian Desmond how we would have been pitched if there was a runner on second could have been totally different. Escobar base hit clean through the left side his last time up. Lester started this inning with 70 pitches. He's only thrown five to three hitters here. That's up the middle. Russell was playing that way. And he stretches out Rizzo. Russell not having a great night with the arm at second base. The Nats strand their fifth runner lead one nothing. There goes the L right by the big scoreboard here at Wrigley Field. Crowd having some fun here. The Blackhawks have scored twice in the second period to lead the mighty Ducks of Anaheim in game six. Such a great sports time. They are in a do or die situation trying to get that thing back back out to Southern California. Addison Russell against Max Scherzer, bottom of the fifth underway. And I remember growing up about 300 miles southwest of here before the Blues were born. Everybody in the Midwest wanted to wear the Blackhawks jersey. That was the coolest jersey in the NHL. That probably along with the Montreal Canadiens, the C and the H. Been a classic for a long, long time. I have a lot of friends in town who I offered tickets to the game to tonight, and they said, No, <laughs> we're going to go to the bar or we're going to go to the Blackhawks game and watch hockey. I said, I feel yeah, I get it. Elimination game, I totally understand. 0 oh, 2. And Scherzer sure a slider to Russell. Max in four innings, 62 pitches, 40 strikes. 
No runs on four hits, six Ks. One walk, Bryant back in the first. Tries to bang the 97 for the strikeout, and Russell able to get up there with it. That's a big at bat and a big part of this ball game. Madison Russell's been hot. I think he's four for his last five. He's got some speed, one run ball game. Definitely want to keep this guy off the bases. Two left handers next. Tried the front door breaking ball. Coglin and Rizzo to follow. Miguel Montero wanted nothing to do with that. Bang, 98. Strikeout number seven. And that's three K's in a row. Woo Pitch number 70 for Max Scherzer was almost 100. And he knew it was a big part of this game, too. So you cruise at 92, you hit occasional 93. I got a little 95 in my back pocket, but against a hot hitter, you get my 98. And you remember Dan's report on the last 15 pitches of his starts, how he turns it up a notch? I don't think he's there yet, but that pitch, maybe it'll be the last 14 pitches of his start tonight. There's Coughlin to his fan twice. Pretty good looking fastball and no swing. Look for a moment like it might have a chance to be called. And then the breaking ball stays upstairs 2 and 0. Change up. I don't think he was fully committed to that pitch, and usually with Max Scherzer, he's all in on every single pitch he throws. It did look like he was sold on that. Came back from 3 1 to strike out Coglin in the first, trying to come back from 3 0 here. He will get strike two. 3 1 change up. Paints it away. Good frame by Ramos. A little off the plate, but Wendelstadt has been wide tonight. He's played a little bit wider than normal. Good pitch track from Mercedes Benz. Wow. 97. He took a little off. Here he goes. <laughs> Eight strikeouts and the leadoff man three times swinging. I'm telling you, you got that run. He's thinking to himself, it's all I need. And here he goes. 3 0 to. A strikeout and Coggins had trouble all night catching up to the Scherzer fastball. Maybe he can't pick it up or maybe it's just too hard. Here's Rizzo base it to right last time. One shake and here it comes. Change up a beauty. And then very late for the 96. I just love when he gets a lead and he goes closer mode. It's something to watch. We joke about how all the time he says I got this. Rizzo to left. Tyler Moore doesn't have to go too far. And Max Scherzer. Talk about a couple of shutdown innings after his team gave him the lead. Sixth inning coming up. Our Honda do up is Mr. Bryce Harper. He's walked for the 41st time tonight. On base percentage over 470. Harper ahead.
And in a pitcher's duel here at Wrigley Field, exactly what we expected. An errant throw by Addison Russell on a double play ball. See the reaction from John Lester. Not too happy has been the difference in this ball game. I talked to Joe Madden today and he said, you know what, FP, that game you guys saw last night or the first two games of this series, that's been our whole season. And the Cubs have played 23 one-run games this year and they've won 13 and they're in another one here tonight. Yeah. And that could be a bad thing for a young team early, but they've held their own. And I think the feeling around here is that you give this ball club a couple more months to play together, they might be in for a nice summer. And uh, in fact, I think you might have said this might not be our last game at Wrigley Field this calendar year. I mean, it's kind of going out on a limb, but you just feel the energy in this ballpark is different than years past. The games. The first two games of this series, even tonight, have been one mistake either way is the difference, and that's what October baseball is like. You know, and down through the years, and George Will illustrated this so well in his book about Wrigley, it was the ballpark and beer. Baseball was kind of third. I think baseball's rising to the top now. I mean, these fans are excited about this team. Bryce Harper to left. It's carrying. It's carrying. See you later. Harper, another opposite field home run. Number 18. The Nationals lead 2 0. Unbelievable. What this guy is doing is unreal. He's playing in a different league than everybody else in the majors. On a night when the ball isn't carrying it Wrigley. He drops a missile to left center field for home run. And as we told you earlier hitting. Two home runs every three games. Lester gives up his seventh of the year. Ryan Zimmerman expecting first pitch fastball tried to go back to back there. Home run number 18 unbelievable. Keeping his hands inside the ball, getting extension. Zimmerman 0 for 2 tonight. I was talking to Bryce before the game yesterday. I was saying, let's look at the home run again first. Stand on the cutter. And we talked about lefties having success against Lester this year, hitting 319 coming up tonight. It's because the ball's moving away from you. When you see the cutter as a lefty, it's moving out over the plate. And Bryce Harper with another smooth, balanced swing rides one out here for home run number 18. Ball one to Zimmerman. The Nats have hit their 53rd home run. Look at that. Six to left, six to center, six to right. Unreal. I got so excited I spilled the water all over your scorebook. Sorry. No, that's I mean no, that's a media guide. That's expendable. <laughs> Sorry. The scorebook we would be hooking I mean, right now. I just gonna get you electrocuted because Bryce Harper went deep again. I lost it. My bad. It's a Cubs media guide. It can be replaced. Yeah, Although my gamer yeah. with the Nats is pretty well right now, so we'll have to I mean that's the effect he has. We'll have to get right a towel. <laughs> and probably a lot of other people spilled things at home too. 18 home runs. Come on, call him up to a different league. Haven't I taught you no open beverages on the counter during mm. a game? Keep them on the floor. Well, I feel like this is a booth where there may have been a few open beverages in the past. I do believe that. Yeah. RBI number 43 for Harper came in tied with John Carlo in that department. So the Nationals box score. Back in the fourth after the Escobar hit and the throwing error by Addison Russell on a would be double play ball the Nats scored their first run in the series without hitting a solo homer. So Bryce two homers in the series Chris Bryant two homers in the series and you know I was talking about how Matt was getting his managerial poses down in the second year as a skipper for the Nats he, he also knows where to stand. He's always next to Bryce who gets a homer. Big curveball, swing and a miss, strikeout number nine for Lester. That'll bring in Dan Ugla with two outs here in the sixth. The slugger club right there, Matt Williams, Bryce Harper. Remember the strike here, Matt Williams was on pace to break 
single season home run record. And then the strike happened. So he knows a lot about taters. But I don't think anybody on the planet knows more than Bryce Harper at this point. Here's Zugla. Ground ball. Called third strike on a pitch that was outside. He got a first pitch breaking ball and that popped straight up on Starlin Castro. Interesting scoring decision. And they didn't waste any time with an E6. No, I think the ball was still popping up in the air when they put it on the scoreboard. Right here, they put E6 up. Kind of sat on it. You see him sit on it, then you're at the mercy of that hop. When you go to your backhand side, if you actually rake your glove low to the ground back toward where the ball came from, it sticks in your glove. But once you set your feet and leave your gloves there, now your glove gets hard and you're at the mercy of the last hop, and that's exactly what happened to Castro. Well, an opening for Tyler Moore here with two outs in the sixth. Tyler had a long at bat two innings ago before Lester struck him out on a fastball up and away. Tyler won for five career against the lefty. Who's about to throw his 90th pitch and we're only in the sixth inning. Scherzer in comparison threw five 79 pitches. Not exactly a low count, but when you've struck out eight guys, and he's just roaring his way through this game. Scherzer, by the way, just had his first one, two, three inning. Has a base hit tonight as he walks to the circle. Dirty uni. Love it. And more to the left side, and Bryant comes up to pick that. Bryce Harper. Leads off the bottom of the sixth with his 18th home run, RBI number 43. Great opposite field, staying on the ball, and about four rows up into the new bleachers. And may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. John Lester, six innings, two runs, one earn, giving up six hits, striking out nine. Scherzer has struck out eight. He's given the Cubs no runs on four hits. Beginning here, Bryant, Fowler, Castro, 3 4 5. After he got Rizzo on the fly ball routine style to Tyler Moore to end the fifth inning. Scherzer, five in a row and eight of the last nine. Retired. Walked Bryant in the first and a fly ball off Chris's bat for the second out, third inning. So the Harper Bryant production strikingly similar in this series.
A lot of run on that 96 of an in. Cubs box. Castro leadoff single in the second. Russell in the third. Lake one out double in the fourth. And there's the 87 diving in the right handed batter. With a low slider, and that Bryant could not extend to get, and that's strikeout number nine. Closer mode. I mean, he's kind of always in closer mode, but this is a little different. Big stage here at Wrigley Field. Nats going for their ninth series win in a row tonight. Love the dirty uni. And what's not to love about Max Scherzer if you're a Nats fan or you're playing behind him? Here's Dexter Fowler fly ball the left swinging strikeout. Look at that change up drop to the outside edge. Attacking with any pitch at any time. And a hitter who just took a pitch going for a long walk out of the box. Scherzer went for a bit of a stroll there too. Ninety five to the edge. Two hundred eighth career start. Trying to achieve his 97th big league win. Trying to beat the Cubs for the first time. All three of his career starts have been here at Wrigley. ERA was good coming in 225. And that's a hitter all locked up on a curveball at 82. Strikeout number 10. You see everything out of the zone. He got some calls there because he's pounding the zone. Wendelstead in a rhythm with Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer. In a rhythm all of his own. Now it's time for Toyota Case for Kids. The Washington area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making a donation of 37 bucks to the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this year. 29th career game with 10 strikeouts or more. Fourth this year. He's done it at the Mets at home against Miami and at San Diego before tonight. Curveball, base hit. Starlin Castro two for three. That'll get Junior Lake in there in the six. So Scherzer had retired seven straight and 10 out of 11 before that single. I'm just sitting here thinking how long teams pitch to Bryce Harper. When is he going to start getting the free passes? Based on what he's done so early in this year, 18 home runs already. He's not swinging at balls, he's swinging at strikes. Remember in 2004, Barry Bonds walked 232 times, 120 of those were intentional. Yeah. I don't think anything like that's going to happen to Bryce, but he's going to start intimidating other managers not to pitch to him. He's been walked six times intentionally this year, and however many more times. Unintentionally, yeah. intentionally, where they just kind of pitched around him to see if he would bite through a bunch of 02 pitches, basically. He's on about a 150 pace. But that pace, as you say, could quicken. 96, whenever he needs it, Max Scherzer are reaching back. Junior Lake, no chance on that one, strike two. Now, last time it was 02, Scherzer threw him a heater low and away, and Junior did a good job of taking it down the right field line. For a two bagger. That's the one that struck out Bryant and a good take by Junior Lake. All-star game a long ways away, but we talk about 
Nats players and how they only had one guy last year and it was you know, basically. Hey who do you think your all star is Matt Williams and Tyler Clifford went well deserving. But you got Scherzer you got Harper span maybe Escobar Storm. Swing and a miss on a big breaking ball. Scherzer strikes out the side. 11 K's through six. His career high by the way. 15 to nothing. Washington. Nats fans and yoga fans come up to the ballpark on Sunday, June 7th for the inaugural yoga in the outfield. Do the Yankees do yoga in the outfield? With the purchase of this special game ticket, enjoy a 45-minute yoga session in the outfield grass after the Nats Cubs game and receive a Nationals yoga mat. Carp, you want one of those so bad. Yoga in the outfield Thinking tickets about are it. Thinking limited about it. and can be purchased at nationals.com slash yoga. The players on the right are not attempting yoga. Mm. Trust me. Yeah, that's not one of our poses. No. General manager caught me doing some today. Here's Scherzer, base hit last time, one for two. Max now leads the staff with five hits this year. Lester in what figures to be his last inning, due to bat third in the bottom of the seventh, throwing in his 92nd pitch. And right now, because of the strikeouts, Max Scherzer is up to 94 pitches through six. Busted bat down to third for Bryant. Rizzo's had to go get some throws tonight. And by the way, with his 11 strikeouts tonight, Corey Kluber and Clayton Kershaw, the other big leaguers with 83 Ks. Toyota Ks for kids are going to be rich. Max Scherzer doing a nice job of supporting that charity. Next up for the Nets, Span and then Desmond. Denard one for three with a base hit in the third, and then Desmond a pair of doubles. The way Desmond's swing against Lester, you'd love to see Denard Span get on here. That's low and away in the series. The Nets leadoff guy, four for ten, a pair of solo homers. Desmond is four for eleven. A little bit outside. Just after 10 o'clock back home in D.C. Wrigley Field the lights are on on a beautiful Wednesday evening rubber game of the three game series. Turning out a little better for Max Scherzer than John Lester at this point. Up the middle and there is Span getting aboard for Desmond. Denard another multi hit game. And five knocks in this series. 
Speaking of multi-hit games, Geico highlights Ian Desmond with a double-double work in here tonight. Extended his hitting streak to 12 games. First time up down the left field corner. Third time up down the Cubs bullpen. Ricochets around down there. He'd like to have three right here. And let's see if the Nerd Span decides to go on John Lester. Left-hander James Russell, right-hander Jason Mott. Chris Bazio, the Cubs pitching coach to the mound. By the way, checking the doubles ledger in the National League, Ian Desmond with 16. Now only Adrian Gonzalez and Matt Carpenter, 17 hits starting the day with more. By the way, you mentioned the All Star game. As of today, Bryce Harper was leading all National League players with 1,116,582 votes. So Bryce off to a great start in the balloting. And it's all online now, so the voting doesn't go one way then the other based on what teams are on a home stand and what teams are on the road. It's just kind of a steady stream now with the online thing going. So here's Desmond. Say a Dexter Fowler plays a fairly shallow center field here. I guess a guy with power going that way. And really, when Ian's going well, power to all fields. Good time to steal. Let's see if he tries. He got a huge lead right now. Pretty quick. Off speed. Lester only threw 36 pitches the first three innings. The Nats made him throw 34 in the fourth. When he walked a couple and they scratched out that run. Two and one. Ian Desmond, not exactly your prototypical take a little swing and bump the ball around number two guy, but here we are in a two one count. Runner holding and a big swing by the shortstop. Either is the other guy, Anthony Rizzo. Joe Madden batting Rizzo second. How about tonight. that? Yeah, he flip flopped Bryant and Rizzo. From where they were against Jordan Zimmerman last night. And then Fowler, who had been leading off, replaced by Coglin. They dropped Starlin Castro down to number five, and Max Scherzer said, Well, whatever. Huge lead for Denard Span. I mean, he's a whole nother step out there. Watch this. Look how far he's off. He's going to get a little more too. A little more. He's going. He's got to go. <laughs> Lester pulling a Scherzer and holding here. Time given. Got too good a jump. He's trying to time up John Lester. He's quick to the plate, so it's not as simple maybe as I'm making it out to be. But when you have a guy that you know can't throw over to first. You just don't want to get out there where you're too uncomfortable. In a big lead, and you're thinking back versus second base. Desmond strikes out looking. Span back. Not the kind of sequence the Nats were looking for there with one on one out. And for Lester, a 10 strikeout game. Good cutter from John Lester. Span. Scrambling back Ross with a quick throw. Now Escobar will try to keep the inning alive for that. That guy in the on deck circle. And by the way Nelson Cruz hit his 18th. For Seattle today. And Bryce has gone number 18 here. First pitch change up from Lester. Trying to keep his team within two. To try to get Bryce Harper up so everybody at home doesn't have to wait another inning to see him. Yeah, you're. Uh, this inning ends right here. You're kind of anticipating a Russell Harper matchup in the eighth. No offense to everybody else. The ball club's playing well. The team's hitting. They're doing everything right. But I mean, I turned to you during the break. I said, "When's Bryce up?" And, th and that's what it's become.
One and two to Escobar. Joe Madden's ball club used to playing tight games. Four and a half back in St. Louis in the central. And not getting any help the last couple of days from Arizona playing down there at Bush Stadium. By the way, that glass of water I spilled on the Harper home run, this is the cleanest this desk has ever been at Wrigley Field. In the history of this ballpark, in this tiny yeah. booth we sit in, yeah. this is the cleanest it's ever been. Well, yeah, a small price to pay for losing two media guides <laughs> and almost getting electrocuted. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Out of everything comes some good, I suppose. I'm mean, actually the heck out of that thing for you. Because I knew if it got to your scorebook, that, oh my gosh. Yeah, it would be just. We the, might have to have you take the weekend off. We have to put happens. the tarp on the field if I spill the water in your scorebook. Some things in this game are sacred. <laughs> runner goes. Escobar trying to hit behind the runner. And Addison Russell takes care of that. So John Lester hits well enough to win a ball game tonight. One earned run. Hyundai seventh inning stretch. Scherzer back to work. Seven, eight, nine due up for the Cubs. The Nats in a rubber game on top of two nothing. Max Scherzer trying to pitch as deeply into the night as he can. Nat shoring up the defense with Michael A. Taylor replacing Tyler Moore and left. And Michael has made one of the greatest plays of the year in this series. So it's David Ross being hit for by Miguel Montero. And then they'll go Baxter for the pitcher. Joe Madden, we've seen him in this series, does not hesitate to take his catcher getting the night off, so to speak, and inserting him right into the game. He's playing a man short. On his four man bench with a bullpen of eight pitchers, five righties and three lefties. Max Scherzer, of course, early roots with the Diamondbacks and Montero, a longtime Arizona hitter, one for three career against Max Scherzer. That's that breaking ball. Escobar can wait for the hop, plenty of time with the catcher running, one out. So this is probably the last 15 pitch thing that we always talk about with Max Scherzer and his outings where he just empties the tank saves enough to get through these and how this is how he judges his start by how he finishes. Pitch number 98 coming 65 strikes 32 balls 97 pitches. Next up is Mike Baxter who's never faced Scherzer. Oh for one in this series. Baxter is a pinch hitter 0 for five. His only at bats of the year. 
I don't know who just sang the seventh inning stretch, but they are not through to the next round of Hollywood, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Well, it was a guy from a reality show, and evidently very little music no. was involved in that production. That, that was not good. I mean, he tried hard. Yeah. I'd probably do the same thing. Mike Ditka, by the way, just rose one spot on the all time <laughs> list. <laughs> Jeff Gordon, too. <laughs> two balls. I don't know about that. Good fastball, two and two. If you're at home right now and you're a little bored, though, you can Google Jeff Gordon, seventh inning stretch at Wrigley Field. <laughs> it's quality. He called it Wrigley Stadium, right? He did, and then it just got worse from there. Max Scherzer still throwing 96, and that's strikeout number 12. 12. Look at him stalking the baseballs as thrown around the infield. There's your leaders, and there's your leader. And by the way, he's up to nearly 72 innings now. The 167 ERA is diving. The 199 opponent's batting average taking a dive as well. Addison Russell has one of the Cubs. Five hits. Single up the middle. Back leading off the third. Looks at a good series. Look at him bounce back up on the mound. I mean, watch the body. Man. I love the last inning for Scherzer, if indeed this is. I mean, just bounces right back up there. Give me the ball back quick. Watch. Wow. Look at bouncing right back up. Back pedal. Let's do this. We've been seeing something special. Every time this guy pitches this inning every time. this year every time he's had one six inning outing He's gone seven and two thirds six eight seven 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 eight last time against the Phillies And looking to get through seven more here in Chicago when he gets into the zone he's in right now I, I don't even watch the pitch. I just watch him after the pitch Two two And if I'm a hitter facing Max Scherzer, his body language is intimidating in and of itself. Just the fact that he's staring you down, give me the ball, I'm back up on the mound. He fist pumps on big strikeouts. He's an example to every pitcher in the National League on how you should toe the slab. Change up, swing and a miss, 13 strikeouts. So Max Scherzer, 21 outs tonight, 13 with no contact. An amazing evening for the guy who wants to win his 97th career game here at Wrigley Field. Over look at Tanner Rock with a high five. Waiting. Waiting, Max. 
Max. Max. There it is. Ten. Hey. Tanner Roark's the only starter with the win so far in this series, so Max should wait. Well, there's so much going on. Max Scherzer dealing, Bryce Harper doing his thing. And we go back to his last at bat in the sixth inning, home run number 18. A bolt into the bleachers. And some high fives for Bryce Harper that didn't take quite as long. Left hander James Russell, who can bring it against Harper. And Bryce, interesting, two for two with two walks, and they're both doubles. Lifetime against Russell, whose dad was a right hander, got a, had a great arm, some good years with Texas and Cincinnati. And I think his dad still is a right hander, by the way. You never know. 89 cutting away from Bryce. Miguel Montero now behind the plate. If Bryce doesn't swing, it's not in the zone. It's been that way for the last month. And, and when you, you, know, you look at Matt Grace getting loose, and, and right when you think there's strikes and he's getting some respect, we do the pitch track and they're off the plate. So they are balls. Two more times on base tonight. So the on base percentage creeping upwards of 475 right now. Wow. Hmm. Bryce Harper walks for the second time tonight and the 42nd time this year. Now does the lefty stay to face Zimmerman, Ramos and Ugla and Joe Madden's going to answer that for us. I talked to Bryce yesterday and he said I feel like I'm never going to make it out. That's the mindset I have when I walk into the plate. Walk, base hit, home run. I just have that feeling. It'll be Mott and Zimmerman. This call to the bullpen packaged by the UPS store, your one stop shop for all your small business needs. Let us handle your mailbox service needs. We love logistics. Above and beyond. And by Aloha in theaters, May 29th. Some Wrigley Neon. And the Nats first baseman, Ryan Zimmerman, coming in to face Jason Mott. He's homered off in career, two for five. Uh, I think you're going to get a fastball 99% <laughs> of the time. Just saying, Captain Obvious. 95 miles an hour with the fastball of 89. If he decides to throw the slider slash cutter. Maybe that's what that graphic was saying. He'll throw the straight fastball in a cutter too. Mott threw a scoreless seventh here in the Nats 2-1 win on Memorial Day. Brian Zimmerman is 0 for 10 in this series. 
Cutting itself away outside to an oh. Pardon me, ball one. So Zimmerman two case tonight, a fielder's choice grounder in between. That was almost a balk right there. Do you see him leaning forward before he stepped off the mound? He had a lean going to home and then he stepped back. Bryce's short lead. Zimmerman to right and run down there by Junior Lake. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. Watch every Art of Market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Visit MLB.TV for details. I think if you have a beard as big as Mox, you don't really need to talk into your glove, do you? Or that the beard's doing the yeah. job for you. Yeah. Just talk. Faces Wilson Ramos now. Wilson 0 for 1 career with a ground ball against him. Ramos is 1 for his last 21, but he has one of the biggest hits of this series. The eventual game winning home run here on Monday. Opposite field. Harper short lead. Bryce hasn't done a whole lot of running. He has two stolen bases in five attempts. Remember when he was a leadoff hitter for a little bit? <laughs> Nats as a team. Second fewest steals in the league 14 Dodgers right below that actually at tied with the Nats now the Dodgers. 96 right in there. Lee getting 235 against Mott coming in. ERA nothing to throw about though. 432 at Wrigley, 466 on the road. Ramos late. Upper deck. So if you're sitting at home and maybe a couple of my friends text me asking why Scherzer are coming out of the game, but we went to see the Seals in San Diego together. He was talking about the day after he pitches. And it was very interesting stuff. And he said, when he pours, when he picks up the milk to pour it into his cereal, that his arm is so sore that he barely can do it. You know, and then the day after, you work out the lactic acid, you run all your sprints and stuff, and you get treatment, you ice. But I don't think fans, and I know I didn't realize, the pitcher's arms get that sore after a start. So when we see him reaching back for 97, 98. And you're thinking, well, why isn't Matt Williams keeping in this game? It's two to nothing. Well, there's a long way to go in the season, number one. And that's how pitchers feel the day after they start. And that's how their arms feel. And I didn't even know that. Well, there have been a lot of hitters who would love to pour his cereal for him. Because every time he's out there, he gives our guys a chance to take one swing and win a ball game. Gamer. Seven innings, no runs on five hits, a walk, 13 strikeouts on 108 pitches, 72 strikes. You want, you want the stat of the day? It took till the eighth inning? Well, it just came up. <laughs> Max Scherzer's hitting 200. His opponents are hitting 199 against him. <laughs> That's pretty good. Ramos spoils the slider away. That was not the fastball. And also, when Dan and I were talking to him in his locker in Philadelphia, and Dan had it in a report earlier this year, we told him that Jordan Zimmerman had more starts than walks last season. His eyes lit up, and he said, really? That's awesome. And, and I think it's something that he really wants to do this year, and he's definitely on pace.
So you went from psycho serial killer face to having fun in the dugout. That's who he is. That shot we had of him in the dugout in San Diego a week and a half oh. ago was unbelievable. Yeah, there's some middle linebackers in the NFL that should have taken a look at that game face before he took them out in San Diego. Ramos so for two with a walk tonight, but waging a really good battle with Jason Mott right here. Now the counts back even 2 2. Another note on Scherzer in a moment regarding the strikeouts tonight. With the runner going, Ramos another foul. The Nets last pitcher to strike out 13 in a game. Steven Strasburg twice in 2012. Early May at Pittsburgh, early June at Boston. Hey, if listen, Ramos keeps falling balls off. We'll talk about Max all night. Why not? Ramos can't get to 97. Mott had some serious sink and run on that fastball. Two outs. Get in on the baseball action with Masson. Text the word Nationals to 29292 for a team alerts. Chance to win exclusive prizes all season long, including meet and greets with your favorite players. Word of the day is Nationals to 29292. For Nats alerts, you can't miss. Dan Uglo, one for two career with the base on balls against Jason Mott. Got a pitch up. That's a busted bat. In fact, you heard a thud. I think part of the bat went back and hit the screen right below our microphone down there. The Nats strand their eighth runner of the night. Now it's up to the bullpen for the final six outs. And we're going to show you all of them. That's loud. <laughs> Impressive. Bottom of the eighth inning, top of the order for the Cubs. Mods to do up. It'll be Jorge Soler. Betting for Chris Coughlin, so that's because the left-hander Matt Grace is in there. Rizzo and Bryant to follow in what they've done in this series. Long way to go in this ball game. Matt Grace takes the mound. Fastball is sinker at 91. And you see the off-speed to go with it. Grace to Soler. He rips it into the left field corner. 
first ball fastball hitter. That was 87, but it was sitting up. Like I said, long way to go in this ball game, and Solaire comes up, little ambush piece down left field corner. And you would think this is Matt Grace's last hitter in Rizzo, and you, and you get Jansen in this ball game. Yeah, Matt was a loser last night when some unfortunate defense happened behind him. So here's Anthony Rizzo, one for three. There's Casey Jansen with Bryant in mind, in mind, and then Fowler and Castro. That woke the crowd up. And I'm telling you, if you're on the Cubs bench right now, it's anybody but Scherzer. You don't care who you're facing when you have a guy that you had to face all night with the stuff that Scherzer had. This is uh, I know some nights where you say the save might be in the eighth inning with these do ups. Drew Storm had the night off last night. Rizzo got handcuffed on that ball and still almost got his hands inside it to keep it fair. Two nothing ball game and a lot of pitching left to do in this one for the Nats. Not a bad miss here by Grace. Pretty close. Hit him. Matt trying to reach way back and he lost his direction and he's done. Last two nights have not been good at Wrigley Field for Matt Grace. Looks like Matt Williams might have a double switch in mind here. Deeper into the bullpen, right hander Casey Jensen against right hander Chris Bryant. Pen. We've seen in his first couple appearances as a national that Jansen's excitable on the mound. He has a lot of energy and he works very quickly. He told me that's something that B.J. Ryan, the old Blue Jays closer, told him 
He said, bring the fight to the hitter. I want to be the guy in the ring throwing the haymakers. And he doesn't know if that quick pace affects the hitter, but he says it might throw them off their timing or not give them enough time to generate a game plan. You'll see him between pitches, gets off the mound, gets back on the mound, moves very quickly. It works for him, and he thinks that it might distract the hitters as well. That will be facing Chris Bryant for the first time. Dexter Fowler, a left-hander after that. Danny Espinosa on a double switch will bat ninth and play second base. So the Nats pitcher moves up to the number seven spot. Here in the bottom of the eighth. And I'm looking at Casey Jansen's arsenal this year so far. Fastball, cutter, curveball. He's always thrown a couple outings for the Nats. And in the past, he's thrown a slider. Hasn't thrown one yet this year. In the past, he's thrown a change. Hasn't thrown one here. And crowd on their feet. The Cubs got their big man in the box. 34,215. Wilson Ramos asking for time there. Bryant with a base on balls. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Everybody on their feet here at Ridley. I mean, everybody. Cutters away. That one didn't miss by much, just kind of ran off the plate. But now you got to come to him. Gets the call on the fastball at the knees. Two balls, one strike. The way Brian approaches that ball, a lot like the Nard Span, where the barrel is almost directly below his hands, it tells me he's a good low ball hitter. And we've seen him hit a couple home runs on pitches below the belt out over the plate. Whew. 87 sitting outer edge. Joe Madden's got his guy up. And Matt Williams got his eighth inning guy in. Yeah, this is the way the bullpen was supposed to look from the start of the season before Jansen got hurt. Yeah, pull side pop. And he popped him up. Infield fly rule in effect. Zimmerman has it for a huge first out bottom of the eighth. But check out the sequence. Jansen versus Brian. A little cutter away, 87. Another cutter away just off the plate. 2 0. Oh. Well located fastball down the zone. Another fastball down the zone. That one a little elevated. Might have got away with one there. Then. You see the curveball at 74 to get the pop up to first. Nicely done. Huge out in this ball game. Fowler struck out twice by Max Scherzer. Facing Jansen for the first time. Wilson Ramos thought it was a strike. Shoulders sagged when he didn't get that call. Wilson Ramos out. I think he took a look back at 
second base and here comes Espinosa and Desmond they're going to change the signs. They don't like what they're seeing. From Jorge Soler on second base. Might be relaying signs might be really relaying location might not be doing anything. But if you think he's doing something it's better to have a clear mind on the mound and not be thinking about anything going on behind you at second. Two nothing Nationals. Eighth inning. And a 1 1 target in. Fowler lays down a bunt. Jansen scrambles. Great play and a great pick on the other end by Zimmerman. I'll tell you what, if he doesn't pick that, it's a tie ball game. And the reason why it's a tie ball game is nobody was backing up first base. So you see the bunt attempt. Now, watch in the background from his knees. What a play by Casey Jansen. Great pick by Ryan Zimmerman. But Espinosa went to cover second. Bryce Harper's playing no doubles in right field, so he couldn't get there. That ball is down the Nats bullpen and two runs score unless Ryan Zerman picks that. What a play. Yeah, the pitcher laying out for that one. And Ryan Zimmerman continues his great glove work at first. It's a righty righty matchup now with Starlin Castro. They did move the tying run to second base. I mean, these have been three great baseball games. Two on Monday. Cubs walked off 3 2 last night. 2 0 here. Castro has two hits tonight. Casey getting that knees call again right over the plate. The counts even 1 1. Castro faces him for the first time. to second Ian Desmond backhand gives it to Zimmerman eighth inning over Casey Jansen this is why the Nets picked him up stellar eighth inning work it still to nothing. Cincinnati day off tomorrow. That's the great American ballpark. That's Steven Strasburg and he'll be pitching on Friday night against Anthony DiSclefani of the Reds. Strasburg three and five with a 6.50 ERA. DiSclefani two and four with a 3.46. And we'll get you going as always with Nats extra 6.30 Mass and two Friday night. Junior Lake moves to left field. Jorge Soler stays in and plays right. And the left hander Travis Wood in the game. I sink the fastball cut the fastball. 84 to 88. 
curveball change up the slider to go with it. First at bat tonight for Michael A. Taylor, who replaced Tyler Moore in left field. And because of the double switch, Danny Espinosa will be next. Taylor chops it, facing Travis Wood for the first time. Job of the season, at least his season, for Casey Jansen right there. That was a veteran bullpen job late in the game. Kept the ball down, wasn't rattled. On the road, hostile environment, crowd into it. Nicely done, made a great play on the bunt. Ball by Michael A. Taylor for the first out, ninth inning. Yeah, he's available tonight. Drew Storn had saved three of the last four. And could only stand in the bullpen protecting his catchers when the Cubs walked off last night. National League leader in saves with 15. Danny Espinosa, 0 for 1 career against Travis Wood. And a rare right handed at bat for. The Nats second baseman, but he's done well from that side of the plate. Nine for 25. Kind of odd. The Cubs made the last out in the bottom of the eighth. Suddenly the crowd was standing and cheering because the Blackhawks had beaten the Mighty Ducks five to two, and they'll play game seven back out in Southern California. He's half happy. Yeah, the Nats would love to give Chicago a doubleheader split tonight. I, I give him the lower half. <laughs> Three and oh. Espinosa, not a homer or an RBI from the right side yet. I say yet. Is that enough to get out of here? See you later. How's that for breaking into the power category? Three nothing Nets on Espinosa's sixth of the year. On cue, Danny Espinosa. And everything in the sequence away, and he gets one out over the plate. Leg kick, foot down, extension. And this one would have been on the street last night. It gets about four or five rows back here tonight. Makes it a three nothing game. Big swing. How good has Danny Espinosa been? Here's Span. Upstairs for a ball. Denard, his share of success against Wood with a pair of doubles, two for four. Huge run. Still a safe situation. Dan Ugly needs to put an H in front of his first name or his last name. <laughs> he does. I mean, every time somebody does something good, he's hugging everybody. Dan Hugla. I love it. If he put an H in front of his first name, then he'd be Hadan, and that's just yeah. that's just dumb. Span to the offside. Little spin on that ball. Castro lost it. And that's his second error of the night and 11th of the year. He's very stationary with his feet. And for you younger viewers, you younger infielders out there, I talk about it all the time. When your feet stop moving, your glove gets stiff. And tonight, Starlin Castro, watch him sit. Right there, kind of sat on the baseball, kind of hopped to his left. And once he planted his feet, he really couldn't react to the baseball in that last hop. Done it a couple times tonight. Ian Desmond actually just did it on the backhand, got away with it. But if you keep your feet moving, your glove stays soft. If you stop your feet, your glove gets hard and you're at the mercy of the baseball. Here's Desmond, two for four with a pair of doubles. 12 game hitting streak and 16 doubles on the year.
And even if it goes beyond 3 0, Ian Desmond could do something about that. There's Edwin Jackson, a former Nat, and a former whole lot of other clubs. Even if it goes beyond 3 0, there is a day off tomorrow, and Drew Storen most probably would still pitch the ninth here. He's ready. And how great has he been for the last couple of weeks? All star great. On the move is Span, and that ball's going to drop. And Denard Span will motor over to third with one out on Desmond's third hit of the night. Definitely one one on pick to click this year. <laughs> you tied it up. You're playing 500 ball. And now okay. so am I. Good read by Denard Span. If you go hit and run or you're stealing. And you get all the way to second base on a line drive. There's really no percentage of going back. It's a double play anyways if he catches it. So he just kept going around second. Yeah. So many things you can do when you're up by three runs. Here's Escobar one for four. He wants to elevate something. To his knees. In that quest. And Escobar 0 for 3 career against Travis Wood. Peanuts are in peanut land from May 27th to June 2nd. They have great promotions, awesome giveaways. For tickets or info, call the number on your screen or go to PotomacNationals.com. A one pitch, fastball inside. Escobar 14 RBIs this year. Been on base four times in this three game series. Jammed. Runner hung up between third and home. And that'll be one unassisted as Wood runs down to our span. Two outs. A nice job by Wood to go right at the darn span, make him commit one way, run him back. Tag him out. Wood, a very good athlete. He can hit too. When he used to start, it was like having nine hitters in the lineup. Well, Bryce Harbrick gets another at bat, his fifth plate appearance of the night. He has homered and walked twice. Strikeout first time up tonight. Trying to put a stamp on this series as if he hasn't already. And by the way, the balloting for National League Player of the Month may not be very close. Mm -hmm. 13 home runs this month. The most for the Nats since Alfonso Soriano, who would go on to play for the Cubs, had 12 in May of 06 on his way to a 40 40 season. Kind of get the feeling he's not done yet tonight, too. Yeah, plus three more games this month in Cincinnati. Not exactly a pitcher's ballpark. One one. Harper against Travis Wood career 0 for 3 with a strikeout and a base on balls. No six inning if you missed it, or even if you didn't, let's all look at it for the twelfth time because this doesn't get old. Home run number 18 for Bryce Harper, a missile to left off of John Lester. Hit speed 99. 2-2 two -two with two on, two out. Desmond and Escobar will be on the move. Oh, yeah. 
on the inside corner with a little run back and Bryce does not dispute it. It is a safe situation for Drew Storm. He's been amazing this year with 15 saves to lead the National League. Lake Montero and then the pitcher spot for the Cubs. With Casey Jansen, eighth inning. Check out what he says right here against Chris Bryant. Watch. I got it. And then he throws the curveball, gets him to pop up. You were right, Casey Jansen. You did have it. And then how about this play right here from his knees? Good pick by Ryan Zimmerman. Not a problem. Then the ground ball out right there. Tough hop for Ian Desmond. Perfect throw. And a cool, calm customer, Casey Jansen, gets a job done in the eighth. That was fantastic. Standing ovation from Tony Tarasco. <laughs> That's as good a hold as you will ever see. Coming in with two runners on and nobody out. Drew Storen, bottom of the ninth against Junior Lake, who's 0 for 1 against him. Despite that disputed hit batter call the other day. A ninth inning save on 18 pitches, 11 strikes Monday. Look at the numbers. 22nd appearance, 15 for 16. 26 strikeouts, three walks. Opponents hitting 181. Front door slider. Span to the gap. Plenty of time to get there for him. One out. It's Next up Montero then the pitcher spot something little but I love what Bryce Harper just did right there instead of running and, and causing Denard span to see him out of the corner of his eye he just peeled off as a center fielder when you call it there's nothing worse than looking up at the baseball and feeling the off outfield they're running by you and distracting you even on a routine play. Miguel Montero 0 for 4 career against Storm. Then he goes breaking ball low in the zone for a strike. Nats are trying to make it 8 out of 10 and 21 of the last 27. If you come to Wrigley Field and watch the Cubs play and look at the scoreboard, there's no doubt what position Miguel Montero plays. <laughs> How often do you see the headshot of a guy with full gear on? Hey, does anybody know what position he plays? 
Didn't start the ball game tonight, but this is his second at bat. Good low heat. Danny Espinosa, big home run in the top of this inning to give the Nationals a three run lead, a towering drive. And his head shot way better than Miguel Montero's. That's a hit 54 home runs now. Second in the league only to the Dodgers. Slider kind of frisbeed up on him. And the count 2 2. Crowd of 34,000 plus quiet. Wilson Ramos grabs it. Nasty changeup at 88. Two down. Yeah, couldn't really see it. Went behind Miguel Montero. Did Wilson Ramos hang on to it? Yes, he did. See him stay with it right there. Well, Jerris Familia has been outstanding for the Mets. Drew Storn atop the list right now, and one batter for number 16 is Jonathan Herrera. Drew had to work through two, three, four, and five to get to save Monday. This situation a little different down at the bottom of the Cubs order. I think everybody in the ballpark still watching, dreading the fact that the eighth inning was their shot. Perfect slider in there. 0 oh and 2. The Nats a strike away from their eighth straight series win. How about nine? Mm, not just yet. Ian Desmond wisely holds on. Down to the number nine spot, Addison Russell. Steven Strasburg, Friday night at Cincinnati. If he can get the Nats off to a good start in this series, this could be another really good trip. Last time the Nats left home, they went five and two in Arizona and San Diego. Ninety five upstairs. Russell one for three tonight. Danny Espinosa right there and it's on to Cincinnati after another series win here in Chicago. Well, there's nothing better than having a series win going into an off day. But Bryce Harper doing his thing tonight. Max Scherzer's ERA goes to guess what 1.51 his fifth straight win 13 K performance here tonight. He was fantastic. And the shutout is the fourth of the year for the Washington pitching staff. So Max took the ball tonight. He was amazing. No runs, five hits, a walk, 13 strikeouts in seven innings on 108 pitches, 72 strikes. Not much the Cubs could do with him. The Nats win it. And now we invite you to join us in Cincinnati. Johnny and Ray at 630 Friday. Actually, Johnny will be here with me. This has been a presentation of Masson and from Chicago. See you later.